SMU in the white. We're ready to go. SMU wins the tip back and moves left to right to start this one and puts it in the hands of Kendrick Davis right off the bat, coming off 33 points, the all-time best single game mark for an SMU player in a season opener. He hits Bandamel for a rhythm three, and Emmanuel Bandamel lifts the lid on the score. And that's big for Bandamel. He went one for five from distance last game. At times played a little bit out of control, so look to be a more subdued Emmanuel Vandermilt in this game. Texas A&M Corpus Chris Christie with 139 wins. He's the all-time winningest coach both in Corpus Christi and also at Rice as well where he spent 16 seasons. Very experienced coach. They're glad to have him. Rashid Brown dumps it inside to a Perry Francois right back to Brown late in the shot. Dallas as SMU looks to start 2-0. Kendrick Davis getting some honors from the American Athletic Conference for his uh, outstanding effort last time out with a 33.5 assist effort as Shaq Waugh will be called for the game. They might throw that in there just to throw off the rhythm of the Mustangs and you saw early turnover by Shaq Waugh. Shot inside, doesn't go for Rasheed Brown on the run. Nice battle for the basketball. SMU comes out with it. Davis down the side of the lane and an offensive foul. The player and I think the fact that he was moving the officials called it and that's one of those calls that can go either way. Trying to displace Jalen White, so it wipes off the bucket for the Mustangs. Now Rasheed Brown has led the team in scoring, almost 16 points a game, swings it around the outside. Only six on the shot clock. Again, they're really draining it, Steven. Down to three. And finally, a shot in the interior for Perry Francois. His hook really implementing this game is get the ball inside more and try to work the interior. That three-pointer is way strong by Simeon Fryer getting his first start. And in transition, oh, not quite there for, for Ron Hunt. He the scoring today with a triple. He's going to give Kendrick Davis some space to work. Kendrick Davis, the... First team preseason, All-American player. It's Isaiah JC right back to Davis who falls down on his shot. It doesn't go. And AM Corpus Christi trying to push early in the shot clock this time. Nice little move by Jalen White, but off the mark. Bandamel tries to push the pace. Texas A&M Corpus Christi only giving up 64 points a game, and opponents only shooting 40% from the field early on this season. Their win against Texas A&M International, their loss against Texas State. Again, deep in the shot clock. JC has it knocked away. Good help side by Jalen White. And White brings it up the floor, sliding through the middle. Brown was open for a moment. Slides it back to Miles Smith, who's way off on a three, but it's saved nicely. Still plenty of time to shoot. And just considered the Stanford of the Stanford. <laughs> uh, came back and became the head coach at Rice, and now he's at Texas A&M, Corpus, Corpus Christi, but I've known him for a very long time. Incredibly well-respected in this industry. Again, late in the shot clock. A&M Corpus Christi just fine with that. Smith drops it off for the layup. That is about him and asked him if, if he felt like he was as a surprise this year, and he said no. He's a guy that lets the game come to him, and e everything that he's displayed thus far this year is really what he's expected of him. Including 11 of 11 at the free throw line. He almost averaged a double-double in points and assists last year at Community College of B Hunt just throws that finger in the air, and Kendrick was able to place it perfectly right around the rim. Davis is assisted on both the early buckets by SMU. SMU down by one, and the fadeaway three misfired by Rasheed Brown. Davis led on this play. Let's the defense come to him. Bashes inside anyway, and he hits it off the glass. Four minutes in, it's been Kendrick Davis again for SMU. A hand in all the points so far. Jordan Harrison wearing number one in for the first time for AM Corpus Christi. That's a walk. Uh, waiver release, and so he had to sit out a year, and he's going to be a very welcome addition to the Mustangs. Can shoot the three. Broke Jason Kidd's three-point shooting mark as a freshman, uh, but just someone that they can rely on that can add that added punch from the bench uh, and, and really give 
Kendrick Davis a, a break. Look forward to seeing what he can do. Meanwhile, Isaiah Jacey, the senior forward, able to lay one in with a nice seal off. SMU extends that lead as Harrison tries a drive for AM Corpus Christi. Extra pass out front, Nolan Bertain, who can hit shots from outside, but this one comes up empty. Here comes Kendrick Davis. Davis drops it. Ferran Hunt, his first attempt of the year is his first make of the year from three. Ron Hunt hit 14 triples last year. We'll see how many he hoists this season on the two-man game. That's punched a interior game. The Islanders last year, you, you looked at them and one of the better three-point shooting teams in the country. This year, they've struggled some, and they're trying to take some pressure off that distance shooting by creating that inside-out game and, and allowing those shooters to get a little bit more open looks. Step-in jumper by Jalen White is well off. Kendrick Davis tries to grow this 9-0 run for SMU. Inside, Jay-Z has the height advantage. Does it fall, and he knocks it out. His mind to either make a move or distribute it quicker, but that's that learning process that he has to go through. Yeah, it's Ledoux LeCue coming in with the block. He's from here in Dallas, went to Lake Highlands High School, so playing in front of some friends and family for sure. Isle Smith sets up for Tain. Now an open three, Hairston can't make it go. Ferran Hunt comes down with the SMU rebound, chugging ahead. In the paint, Shagwa sets up Will Douglas, who had a big game last Wednesday. That's short. Jordan Hairston, who was a freshman last year, shot 44% from three back out there. Three-pointer here by Miles Smith. Flangs off the iron. The Islanders having a tough time hitting shots from outside early. Islanders, for the most part, doing a good job getting back in defensive transition. That's where the Mustangs can really hurt you and where Mustangs were exceptional against. Six junior out of Philadelphia. There are three players on this Islander team that all played at Community College of Beaver County together. Kyrie Coates, Rasheed Brown, and Simeon Fryer. And Coach Wilson says he really likes what they bring to the table. Yeah, and he also said this is the first time he's ever recruited three players from one team. But one of the things that he loves about him is this is the first time he's got players that tell him, hey, Coach, we'll do whatever you want us to do in order to win. And they've calmed things down on the defensive side. They've got things working offensively. They scored 97 points here at Moody on Wednesday. William Douglas, a big part of that with a career high 15. He sets up Darius McNeil for his first three. And that's really appropriate that Darius McNeil's first bucket as a Mustang is from distance. And, and I really think that added component of, of a reliable three-point shooter is going to be so beneficial to the Mustang. Makes the run 12-0. And Francois did not know that. thing to pay attention on the defensive end is McNeil defending Jordan Harrison. He's the best defender without Tyson Jolly on the court. And he's doing a good job of really harassing Harrison. Step back three that time it doesn't go. And if you have someone there that's ready to play, it's going to hurt you a little bit. And since McNeil hasn't played in a whole year, he needs to boost up some confidence, get rid of some rust. And not having that person on the bench that can challenge you for that is going to be beneficial to him. And not just a year when you think about it. It's been 20 months since he's been on the floor. March of 2019, the pandemic plus a year. Harrison, a rhythm three that can, comes off to Jamar Young Jr. Jagwa, always a good passer out of the post, finds McNeil. McNeil has it back out front. McNeil, nice That's dump good. off to Young for the dunk. Great play by McNeil. Just has the ability to create for his teammates and create for himself. But you can tell by the way he's playing, he's not rushed, he's taking his time. He's really happy with his production thus far today. Got to be happy with his teammates production as well 17 to 6 smu with the advantage and continuing their big run of 14-0 meanwhile and in corpus christi has been shut down they're one of their last 13 from the field and have to put up a deep three that comes off for javay lampkins 
So SMU seeing what they can do without Davis on the floor. And this time, it's turned over. Douglas falls down on the play, and it's taken away by Kyrie Coates. And this is where I think Darius McNeil is really going to help last game. And we look at Texas A&M Corpus Christi's lineup on the floor right now. And six foot six is the tallest they have out there in Coates. And really, it was Jalen White that time up the floor. Six foot five. He sometimes plays a guard spot, but he was really playing the post there. We had this year. He, he's they lost to Lazarus Keys right before the season. A six eight forward from Orlando that they were going to count on on the inside. Yeah, and Coach Wilson said that really hurt. They found out the day before the game, and he came up, and his leg just started swelling, and he felt some pain, and. You know, he's a guy similar to Rasheed Brown that just plays a comfortable style of a game, uh, can do a lot of things, uh, a leader on the court, but really without him, they lack that interior depth that they struggle with when you play teams like SMU. Hopefully he can get back as quickly as possible and certainly before Southland play. As Ethan Chagua tries to take his man into the post, but comes up short. Rebound by Brown, pushes the pace. And in Corpus Christi's, uh, even though they're not shooting well, but their percentage of points that come from three are, are 39%, which is top 80 in the country. SMU thus far is doing a great job closing out on those three-point shots. White sets up Lampkins, and Lampkins finally has the first three of the evening for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. I'm talking to Coach Wilson before the game. He mentioned that he loves the looks that his team is getting from distance, uh, but they just have to knock them down. and he. He's a coach of percentages, and he feels like they're going to start to come down. Nice find by uh, to JC on the inside, but he wasn't able to convert. And AM Corpus Christi tries to continue their little 5 0 spurt here as we cross the midway point of the first half. Francois down to Brown. Brown finds it and scores it. Make that run 7 0 and an un. Attracts. Give it to your player for an easy bucket. Yeah, that's a big reason why Rashid Brown, his playmaking ability, he can do it in a lot of different ways by he's leading the team in scoring over the first two games of the season. And in Corpus Christi, back only down by four thanks to the 7-0 run. Fryer steps inside the three-point line to offer a shot. And Shagwa comes out with the rebound for the Mustangs. And a smooth athlete. Finds Bandemil for a wide open look off the mark. Rebound tapped out by Ferran Hunt. It's the type of style of play that the Islanders want to get SMU playing in that up and tempo, hairy type of condition. You Stephen Howard. I'm John Little here at Moody Coliseum in Dallas. SMU coming off a win last Wednesday. And in Corpus Christi, one and one coming into the contact. contest as Francois loses it down to the ground. Francois looked at his coach and he pulled his jersey after he made that turnover and you know a little tired like I mentioned three minute spurts is about as much as he can give him then he has to come to the bench. Lampkins trying to save the possession at Karim's off but there's a foul. SMU has seven. Islanders back in that 1-2-2 two, two press got a couple turnovers but for the most part you're trying to slow it down. Well it's that's what you're trying to avoid right there. But how does that leave you open to lobs like that when you go into a different defense? As Davis hits Hunt, Davis with his fourth assist already in this game. Breaks that 7-0 run for AM Corpus Christi. A step back three by Rasheed Brown, and he knocks it down over Davis. I love the confidence and poise that Rasheed Brown plays with. And another giveaway. A pull-up shot, just a little strong by Smith, and the Rebounders hanging around thanks to SMU turnovers in this one. Yeah, eight early turnovers in this first half, which is extremely high. The one thing they've done great on is they haven't given up too many points off those turnovers with only five points, but they definitely need to take better care of the basketball. Uh, Isaiah J.C. coming up with a big steal there. We'll see if SMU can take advantage of it. Vandemel to Davis. Davis only has two points coming off a career-high 33. He does have four assists, though. Little two-man game. Dribbles out in front of himself, recovers, and can't score. And Davis takes it right back. Davis some wild dribbling. 
Nice. Hits a cutter. Pandamel jams it. Again, Kendrick Davis able to create for himself or his teammates, and, and he's always looking for the better shot. Manuel Bandamel, who's a great flasher, did a good job of finding the opening and getting in there for the open look. Jalen White inside cannot finish, and Hunt comes out with a rebound. Mustangs doing a good job defensive rebounding early in this first half. Davis being aggressive, and McNeil comes up with the offensive rebound. Swings it out to Bandamel. Extra pass. McNeil gives it up as well. Here's Hunt, finger rolling over the front of the rim, but it falls off. Those are the type of baskets you have to make. Ron Hunt with an easy basket he should have made on the interior. Jamey Lampkins, who has the only three, or one of two threes for AM Corpus Christi, is called for the walk. What Davis isn't doing as far as putting points in, and he's dishing off assists. He already has five assists in this game, and that's the 23rd time already in his SMU career with five assists or more. He's only played 28 games. And who we saw in here last Wednesday, another Southland team, they would foul a lot. The Islanders not fouling quite as much. Doing a good job of keeping a good shooting SMU team off the line. Islanders going into their three-quarter court trap. A chance for Isaiah Chasey after the Davis miss, but another short shot goes awry for SMU. A chance for Simeon Fryer. Set up Miles Smith. Smith against the much bigger Ferran Hunt. Won't pull the trigger. He gives it to Jordan Harrison. Can't hit from the elbow. Good hands by Jordan, but Coach Wilson just feels like it's a matter of time before those guys come around. Yeah, both of them shooting below 20%, and the leading returning scores from last year, uh, but for whatever reason, just not able to knock it down from distance this year. Davis penetrates, finds Bandamel for another one. And I love when the Mustangs take what the defense gives them. As always, the defense contracts, you just hit the open man, making basketball look easy. Peyton Smith on for the first time, wearing number 12 for Corpus Christi. Sends it out to Miles Smith. Offense looking a little better for the Islanders, but not able to hit the open shot. Mustangs doing a good job of closing out on those three-point shooters, making them force a hand every time. Davis blocked by Simeon Fryer, who also comes out with the rebound. Trying for some early offense. Pull up free throw line jumper. Hey, if they're going to give you that, that look, Simeon, you're going to have to knock that down. Chagra stayed by the rim. Challenging you to shoot it. Knock that down and make it come out. Breyer, one of those three transfers from Community College of Beaver County. All those guys from Philadelphia. Baseline drive by Bandamel. Finds Davis. Left wide open. And one of the things Coach Wilson loves about the players he got from Beaver County Community College is the fact that it, one year, they were the top-rated junior college in the country and lost only one game, and so these guys know would love that. You kidding me? A unicorn mask, multicolored. That's what I'm talking about. SMU with a nine-point advantage, hitting five of their ten outside shots so far. Ethan Shagwa back in the paint, going to work and hitting a shot over. Had the mismatch, took his time, and... Now up for the N1 opportunity, but that's the type of aggressiveness that I would love Ethan Chagua to have throughout the season because he can be dominating on the inside or outside, but he hasn't always shown the willingness to do that dirty work on the interior. Well, he's coming off a game where he nailed four threes, but he shows what he's capable of right there and what SMU is going to need from him this season as well. SMU's lead is 12 as Harrison slides against Bandamel. Making it tough, and now Will Douglas takes it away. Douglas finds a trailer. Charles Smith the fourth, yes. And that's really what they're looking for Charles Smith the fourth to do when he came to SMU. The 31st wing in the country when he was recruited, and he was known as a knockdown shooter and struggled a little bit with that last year, but thus far this year, he's shown the confidence and he's been knocking him down. Francois. Able to go to his left hand to finish past Hunt. Breaks a 9-0 run. 
Jaguar can't leave him that wide open. That's one of the things you have to do is read the scattering report. Ethan Jaguar is one of the better point forwards in the country at knocking those shots down. You got to close him out and make him a dribbler. Already his fourth early heading into his senior year, and just the pandemic helped him learn to appreciate the game more. Don't take it for granted. Looking for his best year ever as an SMU Mustang. Gets it back off the high nice pick. Pass. Oh, nice one to Ferran Hunt. Ethan Chagua is arguably the best passer on the team. So when you cut, when you're around him and he's got the basketball, he will hit you. And just a great give and go pass. Chagua and Ferran Hunt. At six assists the other night against Sam Houston State. Harrison left it on the ground. Has it back. Nearly an open three for Brown. Only 10 to shoot it. Harrison tries to move the offense. Got a mismatch on the interior. Miss Ladu Luku. Oh, they don't find it. And so Ferran, ha Ferran Hunt has a break. All of a sudden you blink. SMU is up by 20. You blink and Ferran Hunt is having a really big game with 11. Comes up short on the free throw. Sheet Brown trying to stop the bleeding for Corpus Christi as we now have just 90 seconds left in the first half. Oh, a nice drive, but an offensive. Simeon Fryer maybe just trying to do a little too much to get his team back into this game. It's been a frustrating shooting first half for Fryer and the Islanders. SMU in the midst of a 19-4 run. Throw to this 20-point lead. Bandamel already has two threes. This one caroms off, but the offensive board by Young to Chagua and that infectious nature of selflessness that the Mustangs and their coaching staff hopes to continue throughout Jamar Young. You gotta feel really good about the future at that position. Jagua stays perfect at the line, has eight for the game, and a little time here at the end of the first half for Kendrick Davis, who already has six assists to go along with his five points. Nice close to this half for SMU after it took both teams a little bit of time to get into the rhythm tonight. Brown tries to throw it inside, but the long. Oh, nice spin move. And leaning in, Jalen White hits the shot. That's one of the things they love of Jalen White. He has the ability to shoot from the exterior and take it on the interior. Nice handle. Oh, Will Douglas with a bounce pass to Charles Smith, the fourth. And now it's stolen right back by Davis. Another one, Charles Smith, the fourth. Bangs the strings. I love that for Charles Smith, the fourth. Again, struggled with confidence last year, but this year, thus far this season, has really been playing nicely. Five points in about five seconds, I think, for Charles Smith, the fourth. Ball goes back to Corpus Christi, only three to shoot. Kick out for a three by Bertain, it's long. Over 26 combined seasons, whether it be at Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, or Rice, getting started with the second half. Messing me with the basketball. Kendrick Davis back out there as the starting point guard after six dimes in the first half. Turns the corner and has a shot swatted by Perry Francois. And M. Corpus Christi looking for some energy to start the second half. Really had a rough time scoring the basketball. Under 25% shooting. Into the lane, the fall away. Doesn't go for Jalen White. White keeps it alive, or Francois does. But Ethan Chagua comes out with it for SMU. Ron Hunt led all scores with 11 in the first. Cover him with a guard, with a big. What do you do? The six foot Miles Smith picks up the foul. Davis adjusting in the lane for two. Yeah, good job by Davis. Just being patient and just let the play develop and poor rotation defensively by the Islanders on that possession. Rasheed Brown fires it inside to Jalen White. Stepping in for two, Perry Francois. That one is well off as well. 
See what Kendrick Davis has up his sleeve. And Ferran Hunt tips the shoulder to the cup. Lackadaisical defensive transition by the Islanders. They were back, but not paying attention to the ball. And Ron Hunt just able to slither his way for an easy bucket. Francois against Shagwa. As you mentioned, Francois will give you some active minutes. You can see there a little bit winded as he gets back up to the free throw line. Senior out of North Miami, Florida. Harry Francois starting seven of his 32 games last year. A three and a half points a game, but misses on both free throws. And Ferran Hunt's big statistical day continues with a rebound. I'd like to see the Mustangs get the ball into JC in this second half. Let him go to work and establish himself on the interior. But Bandamel, when he got a three-pointer coming from Bandamel, his fourth of the game, that's quite nice as well. Spanning the halves, that is a 12-0 run for SMU. They're really taking over. Nolan Bertain gives it back to Jalen White. White trying to get inside against Shagwa, but can't finish. And another rebound for Hunt. You can really see the height of Shagwa affecting White on those interior shots, fading away on each of the last two and missing both. Man, and that Davis shot, that backhanded lay-in, how tough is that to defend, even though he's only 5'11"? SMU goes up 56 to 22, continuing to dominate this game. Good defense by JC didn't start last year. Fryer feeds Perry Francois. Francois going to work. Nice little advantage against JC and gets it to go with the left hand. Yeah, I, I love the addition of Francois and his ability to attack with his left soft jumper over his right shoulder. But again, he's going to have to be able to get a little bit more endurance to play more than three minutes for the Islanders to be effective in, on the interior. Hunt with a nice reversal. Can't hit off the back of the rim. And shrink on him a little bit and get those three-point shooters a little bit more room to operate. Francois matched his career high in the opener this year against Texas A&M International when he scored 12 points. Dribbling in traffic and now getting doubled is Brown, who had eight points in the first half. Bertain with the extra pass. White steps in, nice. fires it right down to Brown, who can't make it go. Nice offensive possession by the Islanders, even though they didn't get a bucket. They got the shot they wanted. Just the quick athleticism by the Mustangs blocked the shot. Bandamel keeps it alive after the McNeil miss. Shagwa wide open. A little bit off, and Jalen White pulls it down. I've seen the ability of Jalen White to take it in transition. Might have did a little bit too much on that possession, but he, oh, no, he did not. He did, Steven. Wait, no, he didn't. He did. No, I did not see that. For Ron Hunt between the legs, all alone. And he's having fun tonight. My goodness, for Ron Hunt, 15 points in this game. Miss Camille DeSoto, you know, he tested the NBA waters in the offseason, withdrew his name from the draft in June. But as far as a pro prospect, I mean, there's not many places where he his game goes wrong. Well, he's not ready for the NBA any stretch of the imagination. He's got a lot of flaws in his game. He needs to get a consistent jumper and be a defender. For him, you got to specialize in one thing and do it great if he wants to make it to the NBA. He does some things well. But he hadn't gotten to that NBA status yet. In one thing. Uh, I, I think for him, it's going to have to be that energy player, being that motor, the guy that, you know, keeps plays alive. It, but you have to have that added component of, of being a defender that can shut people down defensively. Davis blocked by LeCue inside, but SMU has it back. You know, if you looked at the last draft, there was a lot of players that one could facilitate for and create for other players, but also could defend multiple positions. So 95 pounds, he plays the wing right now. It seems like he could guard a lot of different positions at the next level. Yeah, he, he could, but you have to you know, defend that at that can just put up those multiple points quickly. Ethan Shagwa 
Knocks down both foul shots to put him in double figures as SMU has a bunch of different guys contributing tonight, whether it be Ferran Hunt or Shaq Bois, Kendrick Davis, who's a point and an assist shy of a double-double. Davis is going to take it himself. He has 11. Davis wanted to throw it off the glass to Ferran Hunt, but the Islanders did not want to be on two plays for the ESPN Top 10 tonight. A 40-point advantage for SMU as this one gets away inside Rasheed Brown and outscoring Texas A&M Corpus Christi 17-2 in the second half. Good to have you back with us at Moody. I think one of the areas that they're really excelling at is points off turnovers at plus 15, but well-orchestrated play by the Islanders on that last possession with a nice high pick and roll between Miles Smith and Perry Fansaw. Francois rim running for the two. Only the second bucket of the second half for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Smith the fourth who had a big first half. Gives it off to Ferran Hunt. Runs into trouble, throws it away. Chance at another bucket, but Charles Smith the fourth was back, thankfully. Miles Smith able to control it for Corpus Christi. Smith finds that short corner and a sweet jumper. And that's one of those things they're going to need Miles Smith to really come into. This year, as we talked about earlier, he's really struggled with his three-point shot. The leading scorer from last year has had good looks, but just has not been able to get them to fall. That's his first bucket in today's game. A little pocket pass. I mean, Miles Smith is a player last year that had double figures 21 times and had five games of 20 or more points so he can put the bucket in the hole but just not able to get that combination going yet today or, or this year Douglas thought about stepping into one finds Hunt a good look but it comes up short Brown on the run finding Smith again trying to get cooking and it's not just Smith it's Jordan Harrison as well for AM Corpus Christi that have just not been right here early in the season Coach Willis Wilson expects them to be a lot better as the year goes on. The defense on this possession by SMU and a foul call. Body to be able to play it, play through contact. Remember, at some points in this game, he's been playing down inside as the five, like when Francois hasn't been out there. Here he's playing as a guard. Timeout. Jalen White makes me think we're playing in my era with the shorts up high like my former teammate John Stockton used to wear. Look at that. I mean, Stockton, Stockton really had the quads that, that White does, but, you know, the shorts. White misfires on both the free throws. Ethan Shagwa, who's back in and chasing a double-double, is just a rebound shy now. Nice long move by Douglas to pop for two. You can tell William Douglas did some work on the offseason. So much confidence in his game this year, and uh, the game has really slowed down for this young man. Coming off the career high 15 against Sam Houston State, and all set takes the charge. And this is a guy here that's going to be able to get more playing time because there are multiple positions that he's able to play point guard, defend multiple positions. But the biggest thing for a coach is can he trust you? And early on this season, William Douglas has earned that trust. Nice tray by Charles Smith, the fourth. And it was Ethan Jagua who skipped it to him for the three. Another player in double figures for SMU. Here's Harrison. A good look for him, but coming up well short. And Jagua is able to come down with that 10th rebound of the game nice. and the double-double. Looked like a good look, but best patio in town. Enjoy the West Texas favorites while yelling at the TVs. Ozona Grill and Bar. Find your comfort zone. Steal by Ethan Shagwa, who's really contributing on both ends of the floor in this one. And a runaway for SMU so far here at Moody. The second game of the year for SMU. But Jalen White takes it away. Corpus Christi looking for some easy points. Nothing easy about that as Jalen White forces it in. Douglas the other way. Wrap around. And the three-pointer doesn't fall for Charles Smith. White trying to do it again, but runs. And stood in front of him and 
Jalen White did not have any breaks. That is the third on Jalen White. Well, two, 245 pounds, I wouldn't get in front of him, but Douglas did anyway. And oh, man, that all. Which is making those cutters available on the interior. Stephen, when you get into situations like this, he calls, does he try to work on things they're not good at yet and, and kind of run them against something other than air? Or what's the thought here late in the game? Well, coaches pre-conference, which is a short pre-conference this year, they're always going to try to work on things that teams have struggled with. But because of the fact that teams have not seen live bodies before these games, you're working on everything. But you try to impress upon your team Look, we got to run our sets. We have to stay true defensively. Don't look at the score. 0-0, zero, zero, we need to play our game. And that goes for Texas A&M Corpus Christi as well. Nolan Bertain nails one out of the corner. The UAB transfer with his first three of the game. And then on the other end, he comes up with a steal, knocking it to his teammate, Jordan Harrison. Harrison could use a few things to go his way. Finds his running buddy, Smith, into the lane. Tough finish. Herwithal, as a three-year starter, knowing that he's going to get contact on that play, but just trying to create something positive for his team. Miles Smith with the six points, the three rebounds. Slow start to this game for him, but he's coming on. Doubling up Texas A&M Corpus Christi tonight at Moody Coliseum, 70-35. to Maybe the final run for Kendrick Davis of the night. We'll see. He's got 11 points to go along with his 10 assists. The fourth double-double of Davis's career. Davis mentioned earlier, he garners a lot of attention. He went to the interior, and the whole defense shifted and left him nowhere to go. Francois picks for Harrison. Pass to Coates. Too much ball dribbling. Trying to dribble in on Davis, but he just won't let anybody have anything. Here's Francois turning up and under. His leaner doesn't fall, and the rebound's knocked out of bounds. There's not too many forwards in the country that have the skill set of Ethan Chagua. It's just, does he want to do that on a nightly basis? Javay Lampkin steps in and hits a smooth jumper. Vandemel feeds it into the post. Isaiah Jacy. That right-handed hook, that is sweet and soft. And that's what needs to happen more. Isaiah J.C. on the block, he's so big, and he has the ability to back the defender down. And I think if they get that duo of J.C. and Chagra down on the interior, it's just going to open up things so much more for the Mustangs. Francois against J.C. here. Finds Kyrie Coates, guarded by Chagra, and the leader goes Kyrie Coates Jr. out of Philadelphia. Jaguar, ooh, like you say, that skill, but thing at that six foot nine. Bertain with the open look, not this time. He goes lead here for the Mustangs. SMU is going to face some full court pressure out of the timeout. SMU just doing a great job controlling the tempo, controlling the interior. With a Fourteen advantage points in the paint, fast break points, plus 18. Isaiah J.C. working on his game, but comes up empty on his lefty hook shot. A nice little drive by Coates. Gives it underneath to White to muscle it up, and he gets two bigs. It doesn't go. Chagua adds to his rebounding total. Sets up Douglas. Fires. No, and just Steven. Five players after four players were in double figures the first time out against Sam Houston. It's five in double figures tonight. And that's the balance that's beneficial to teams, particularly when you get into conference play, because you're not able to just focus or hone in on one player. You got to remember, Darius McNeil has not gotten in his flow. That's a double double guy as well. And then Tyson Jolly. So they're going to have a plethora of people they can look to offensively throughout this season. Good job by SMU to run the floor. Will Douglas with the bouncer to J.C. for the bucket. Isaiah J.C. equaling his career high again with six. Deep three. Too strong by Lampkins. And here comes Davis. This is always dangerous to Douglas. Unselfish to Shag. Accelerate his night. Ten points, 11 rebounds. His sixth career double-double. And built on the 4th of January. 
Ron Hunt and Ethan Shagwa both had point rebound double doubles. Tonight, it's Shagwa. Comes back on. Oh, deep three and clangs off. Kendrick Davis wearing number three. Good matchup out front with Jordan Hairston. Finds Hunt right back to Davis again. Davis had 33 his first time out. Good look to Bandemel. Doesn't crawl down, but JC for a career high. No, instead, it's a flying flush by Hunt to clean it up. One of the things that's been indicative of the teams that Coach Jankovic has coached has been the relentlessness on the offensive glass, and you're seeing that ability tonight with JC keeping the ball alive for Ron Hunt, keeping the ball alive, Shagwall also. And that, that becomes a, a mentality of a team, and that's something that looks like it's starting to develop with the Mustangs. Ah, uh, Davis with the deep look to Bandamel. That's assist number 11 for Davis. Always have to get back in defensive transition. You cannot ball watch as a team. And especially with Kendrick Davis on the other side. Spertain steps into a three. A lot of up and down stuff. Bandamel wanted a foul on Kyrie Coates Jr. So they clear things out for Emmanuel Bandamel. Shoot it back with five and a half to play and a 40, maybe 40 plus point lead. Turnover. Last game he got a little bit careless with six turnovers and that's something as a, as a guard you, you can't have. Playing within himself maybe a little bit more in this game. Darius McNeil playing his first game in an SMU uniform, has a three-pointer. He gives it up unselfishly. Ferran Hunt turning and goes to the line. But here's a little bit more about the unselfishness you were talking about, Stephen. 25. Yeah, whenever you get more than 15 assists for the game as a coach, you're going to be happy. But to have 25 assists, uh, that's just indicative of a, of a team that can share the ball, but also finish. Oh, Bandamel taking it away, but blocked by the front of the rim. But Bandamel's good night continues here against Corpus Christi. Francois sets up Harrison off the mark as Harrison's rough season continues from three against Sam Houston State. That's a big reason why that first game got so out of hand. Here's the face of Darius McNeil, a guy who's happy to be back on the floor for the first time in 20 months to lace it up. And I could hear a little smattering of applause from a very specific section here in Dallas. Guy that moved back. Still plenty of time to shoot it for Texas A&M Corpus Christi as Willis Wilson's team tries to work their way into some kind of flow moving into their next game. Lampkins gives some ground, finds Francois, and he finds a really good dead spot at the back of the rim. That ends a 14-0 run by SMU. They've had several of those. Nice knock away by Nolan Bertain. Coates goes baseline, loses his footing. Plenty of time to shoot it for the Islanders as Francois goes back in the post. Again, Harrison has a perfect look, and that's what he's capable of. His first three of the night, second of the year. Long pass up the floor and a look. Trust your teammates, and you saw a lot of assists tonight. Inside, they've gotten the ball to JC, a lot of points in the paint and discipline. You gotta trust your offense, trust your defense. Um, but yeah, 36 points in the paint. That was keys to the game brought to you by Sewell as we do take a look at some of these numbers. The Mustangs in the paint have been pretty good, Stephen. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have 36 points in the paint, you're doing a, an exceptional job out rebounding the Islanders with 40 total rebounds. Uh, but one of the bigger things to me as far as trust is that 25 assists on 31 made field goals. SMU leads by 40, and that's a big reason why. Your keys to the game brought to you by Sewell. Experience Sewell's obsession with customer service at one of their 10 Dallas-Fort Worth dealerships. Sewell obsessed with service. 
since 1911. Charles Smith, the fourth, can't hit on another three. A transition look instead for Javay Lampkins. That's off the mark. And in his first game with SMU, Darius McNeil now loses it out of bounds to Harrison. Nice save, Bertain off the shot. Bad angle by the fish who made that call. But sometimes points in this one. It's been a play. Look who SMU puts at point guard. Alex Tabor Jr., the sophomore from Charlotte. Whenever he gets in the game, the buzz starts. He's been able to play in both games. Junior tearing into the lane and blocked. Try to make a shot. A lot of hard work goes into those players, the managers, the, the bench players, the role players, the walk-ons. And they're a huge component into what makes a successful basketball team. Neal off on the catch and shoot. Well, there's no doubt about that. It's a, it's about one to 30 or more that make this thing go. You may just think about the, the five on the floor at a time, but that's not the way it is. Harrison has that range, but comes up empty. Long pass ahead is a dangerous one by. Because again, there are guys that are still trying to earn minutes on this rotation. And this is how you do that. Yeah, but even with 204 left, you saw Coach Jankovic really pouring over every aspect of the game and really soaking in what was happening on the floor. A uh, nice steal nearly and redshirt last year. And has part of that interior line for SMU that's re been really dominant inside the paint today. Young scores his second point. SMU's going to need that going into conference play, and it's on the horizon with East Carolina coming here on the 16th of December. And a pack on the inside. And rim to block that shot. And that's something that the Mustangs do not have that they have had in years past is a definitive rim protector. Your Ane, who is trying to get eligible, coming over from Oklahoma State, is a guy that could end up being that rim protector but so far the NCAA has not ruled on his eligibility Fryer out of the corner around and off and the tough shooting day from three continues but if you're able to get your uh eligible here this season as Tabor hits a shot off the back door cut Everybody loves that. But if you're able to get your Ane, a guy who has a couple of years experience in the Big 12 as an uh, established and, you know, guys that are in the NBA right now, that's going to be a boon for your program. And this is a guy that's an elite level shot blocker, as you mentioned. And you're going to be able to have a lot of multiple different looks for your team. Still waiting on that NCAA waiver after the transfer in July. Three free throws. Hits the first two. 10 SMU players have scored in this one. If you've touched the floor, you've gotten on the scoreboard tonight. That's always nice. Douglas passes up on the wide open three to run a little offense. For Alex Tabor Jr. trying to cross over Bertain. Gets the dribble again into the lane. Nice adjustment and the flying flush by Jamar Young Jr. The three-pointer goes by Jordan Harrison late in this game. That's a good way to cap it off, isn't it, Steven? Especially with the way that SMU played on the inside tonight. Yeah, you can never forget to put a body on bigs, particularly ones that are going to crash the board. But a good showing tonight by the Mustangs. SMU wins it over AM Corpus Christi, 91-54 to go to 2-0. AM Corpus Christi.